Conversations with D on the D Mosley official podcast. Perfect. I know one thing that I wanted to talk to you about because I know this is like one of your biggest loves of just being alive. Um, like, what do you love about dogs so much? Like, you love dogs. My squishies. What makes them such good companions or like such things worth loving? Aside from the fact that they're just obviously cute, mm -hmm. I think it's just like their love is just so unconditional. Like you can do no wrong in their eyes. Like they, and like their whole entire world is you. Right. And I think it's just like that's that's just all they care about is you, you and food and sleeping. Yeah, like and the I, owners, they're humans basically. Yeah. I think it's just, yeah, like their love that they have for you and that they're always just there for you no matter what. They're when you're excited, when you're sad, and they're always good listeners. <laughs> and they just give you cuddles, and they're just squishy. <laughs> squishy dogs. Um, yeah, and of course, like we recently lost our dog of 10 years, uh, Jackson. And Love you, Jack. I definitely can attest that I feel I feel the same way about like what you just said. And I believe that for me and you both, Jackson was like the epitome of that mm -hmm. in terms of like him being just there all the time, him being like a companion to you. Uh, just his nature was super calm. Everybody that met Jackson was like, oh, he's like a really good dog. He you was know? such a good boy. And he was always like that, even when I first got him. That was one of the reasons why I did get him because he was like smart. He wasn't just like <laughs> like pulling everywhere. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't like super. You know how dogs can be, basically. And, and he was walking on the like narrowed. Yeah, he was just doing like really interesting stuff. things that cool dogs do. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, he's a cool dog. He could do this and do that. Like he's smart. I don't know. And then. And then he just had that sense of, like, peace and calmness. So, like, whenever I would come home from, like, practice or school or work or whatever it may be, he was just there, just calm. I know. It's like a complete 180 from the rest of my day. You know what I mean? You're always, always stressed. You see Jackson. He's just, like, sleeping, calm, cool-natured. And ah, I could just attest to that. And, of course, he was just a handsome dog. Like, it's he's my son. such a handsome boy. Yeah. Mr. Light Skin. He always had the light skin face. <laughs> 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 Just. He's a. Yeah, and he had to make all his noise. Yeah, but. Yeah. Dogs get old so fast, and I think that's one thing that people underestimate. You know. Oh, yeah. No one. Ooh, no one prepares you for the end. That's for sure. No. I don't think you can. I, don't, I definitely don't, I don't think even you can. think it's like talked about enough. Just no. like, why don't we shed light on it? Like, dogs typically live for, let's say, some dogs only live for like eight years, like Great Danes, and, and like yeah, bigger the dog, the yeah, kind of shorter the lifespan is. Yeah, which is like stupid too. But yeah. you know, let's just say generally ten to fifteen years. You know, I feel like that's a good range for an average. And you could think like, like for instance. I went from high school to 26 years of age, so 16 to 26, or 17 to seven, or 17 to 27, or whatever it is. And I still feel like I'm the almost kind of similar of a person. You know, I'm not like old. I don't have kids yet. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like I just feel like I'm still young in a sense, and I feel like I'll be young for a minute too. But you know. And that's like I'm like a grandpa or anything like that. And Jackson is like, he lived his whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. In that, in that same time span. And I feel like when dogs are, you know, whenever it's their time to come, it's almost like you know that you're going to have like all this. I mean, you would think, you know, plan to have a lot of life ahead of you. And you expect that dog to just be there that entire time because it's all you've ever known since you've had them. And then when they're gone, it's like, is different it's like a hole you know oh, yeah like it leaves a hole in your in your day leaves a hole in your routine how you feel whenever say you like like for instance i would come into my and come in here come into the studio or office and 
Jackson, you know, have his bed, you know, there. So you just you get used to seeing him in here and then like you don't anymore. It's like, ah, that hurts. Like, yeah. More than I'm letting on right now. Mm-hmm. But because I'm not trying to get too emotional, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get too sad on the podcast. I'm not trying to make this a depressing podcast. I know that's a really sad way to like open up a podcast, but love I you, just, Jack. yeah, I love you, Jackson. I love you so much. Like, I don't, you know, it's like the elephant in the room yeah. kind of thing for me right now. At least that's how I feel. I just feel like I, it's on my mind all the time. So I'm like, yeah. Dogs are great, especially if they're like really good ones. Hmm. Man's best friend. Yeah, literally. Literally man's best friend. They're your home. You know, feel oh, safe. Yeah. We don't realize, like, I think just how, so I had said that, you know, we are their whole world. But then, you know, as a humans, like, we have a lot going on in our life. And so they're, like, a piece of our world. Mm-hmm. And it's just so crazy how, like, you can kind of get into the motion of things, you know, Going to work, doing things around the house, exercising, whatever, you know. But what does school. that lead to, though? It leads to, like, not appreciating them as much. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was like, they kind of become, like, a, they become a part of your everyday, but you don't really, like, realize how much of a part they are, whether it's, like, sheer just spending time with them or just the things that you have to do for them. You have to take them out, take them on walks, feed them, make sure their water bowl is full, that kind of thing. And so those things kind of just become like daily chores, daily habits. But then, and again, they kind of just join in through like the motion of life. And obviously they bring joy and there's like good moments. I'm not saying that they just kind of, you know, No, no, that's definitely not what you're saying. And like basically what you're saying is that this is what it can be at its worst if you have like a, a good solid dog especially just life you know we're only human you know we got to deal with things that come to our attention right um it's just like people when they're like their husbands and wives you know people get used to their husband or wives being there all the time just like what happens but like when it comes to your dogs like what you're saying is like you know you could even have those the best moments of your days with your dog but just it's still like you're not in that mindset of like i need to love you like every single minute well yeah and you think about too how we know that like the older you get or like the you know the older we get it's like time only goes by faster time dilation so yeah the way that happens and then you think about their lifespan that's only you know like 10 years which is a good amount of time but like in our you know grand scheme of our lifetime that's pretty short so as like those years kind of start to go by faster you're like boom that's like their whole life yep. it's just gone yep. and it's not that again like you had said that you don't appreciate them every day but it's just like Basically, to shed light on, it's like kind of just when that day comes and it's their time to, you know, kind of pass on, it's like a whole chunk is now missing from your day. It's like a whole chunk is like missing from you. And like even now, it's like still doesn't right to like only fill one bowl and, you know, only grab one leash. No, not at all. It's now one boy instead of, come on, boys, let's go outside. And Mm. yeah, it just, it's, it's tough. It's a, it's tough. It's tough for sure. And I think like, um, I feel like it like really made me grow up really fast in the sense of just like, you think of how fast time goes, like what you just said, like you think of time and it's going by, but whenever, it, you know, something like that, that kind of marks an end to something, then you have like a minute to like reflect essentially on like all that time that had passed. And I don't know, it just kind of, it just puts things into perspective and then it kind of makes you grow up in that. It just like as a byproduct, because now you're like, time is passing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like time is going by. And it's like, wow, like you see, and it's not like he passed, like Jackson passed from like a car accident or uh, getting hit by a car, I should say, or whatever. He had cancer, you know? He had cancer, and it's something that old dogs get, and he was an old dog, you know, older, you know. It's not like he was at – he wasn't at the back end of his life, which I think is the – for his breed was, like, what, 14 or something like that? Yeah. 13, yeah. 14. 12 to 14, 15. Yeah, so, so whatever. And, and, um, something like that. But you also had stated a statistic that you saw on the Internet, like who knows if, like what how accurate yeah, these are. Yeah. Um, but that basically – 50% of dogs over, let's say, give or take 50% of dogs over 10 
develop cancer. Yeah, I die from cancer. Die from cancer, sorry. And like and specifically specifically the kind of uh cancer that Jackson had, right? Or something like that or was his like a common one? Yeah, it was like one I think it was like one of the most common up there with one of the most common cancers and like his was like the most common uh tu- like tumor of the heart or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Most common like yeah, heart cancer. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. It's I don't know. But anyways, like I said, it was a sad way to open up a, <laughs> a pod, but just want to say real quick, man, I love you, Jackson, so much. And if you have a dog out there um, that you have and that you cherish, you know, it's not like outside dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, a, uh, we just have a dog, you know. Now nah, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about the people who have dogs that are like, no, nah, this is like my partner. Like, this is my, like, you cherish them a lot. Like, you care for them. You talk to them sometimes when y'all are like just mm-hmm. sit chilling alone. You know, like you have, you could have full blown conversations with your dog. You know, like I used to use Jackson to like rehearse things or memorize things or oh, yeah. you know rant to or you know <laughs> just whatever it may be or just even talk to him like yeah man it's it's a crazy this is yep. a crazy day to, oh, uh, Jack yeah all of the above just all that whatever but um yeah like if you if y'all have a dog like that man just really cherish them really cherish them. Especially, like, if you already know that's what that dog does for you. Because mm-hmm. when they're gone, they're gone. And all you can, I mean, you know, if you love that, if you love your dog, like, you know, basically appreciate them while they're here so you can, like, appreciate them when they're gone, in a sense. Like, I know Trey has said that before on a previous podcast. Like, if you appreciate them while, while they're here and their arrival, like, you are, you will appreciate them in their departure, in that sense, and not have, like, pain associated or guilt or oh, i wish i would have did this you know what i mean like you want to really like appreciate them while they're here yep. and that's even if that if that's just a little bit like a one percent more appreciation if you're just listening to this right now just even if you just appreciate your dog at one percentage or more you don't have to go all out and you know love them like make it your whole life and your whole life's purpose because you know you're only one person you have to spread your love around but um yeah that's pretty much it dogs are just priceless they're priceless they are yeah there's this one uh tiktok song that or sound that i've like seen recently and it's basically like you know why do you bring your dog everywhere and it's like well you only get like 10 summers with them Mm. dang that just hit my soul right now wow this is very true this is very true and you know, if you're taking your dog anywhere out in the summer, if you live here in the south or anywhere where it's hot, man, y'all better have a Tesla where it keeps the AC on because uh, I would hate for you to leave your dog in the car and they die from a heat exhaustion. Don't. Oh, my God. I know, but people are doing that, though. I know. It's just so terrible. Sad. It's Sorry. terrible. And, like, people, like, really don't. Like, they bring their dog. Like, for instance, you you know, why do you bring your dog with you everywhere? You know, they have that mentality because, oh, you know, you only only get 10 summers with them and then they bring him with them and then they (laughs) forget to freaking leave the windows down or leave the AC on or something. We're talking about like like, taking them with you to like do actual activities. I know, I know. I'm more just saying like people like have a, have like a, it's like a known thing. You know, that's why they have to literally put up signs like, don't like the, what we heard in CVS today. Oh, yeah. We're in as CVS. As Tyson's in the car. Yeah, as Tyson's in the car. In our defense, it was not hot yet in the day. It was early enough. Yeah, it was he, it was in the morning. You're only so. in, the, in there for a couple minutes. Yeah, getting a passport, man. Going in that mind. Um, but yeah, getting the passport. Um, but yeah, people will like, you know, unintentionally kill their dogs. And I'm sure that's like a terrible pain. I'm sure that's a terrible. I can't even fathom that. Yeah, that has that. I don't like. I don't wish that on anybody. For like, I really don't. Um, Not the squishies. So it's just a general PSA. Like, don't take your dog somewhere and they, you know, a tragedy happens. Just pay attention. Pay attention. Just, even if you have a baby, like if you have a baby, please do the same thing. People have done that in America and worldwide. They leave their babies unattended in their vehicle and their dogs or whatever, and they die. It's terrible. But anyways, another podcast <laughs> question. You have to answer this because, 
you know, it's one of your first podcasts. You said I have to answer. You that? have to answer this. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, a, it's a question that every person that comes onto a podcast has to answer, and the question that has to be asked. Okay. Do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <sighs> the world has to know your opinion. It's okay. And we're just Either saying way. aliens as in like other life forms. Yeah, other life. I'm not talking about like uh, green, big headed, big eyed, <laughs> flying saucer aliens. I'm just saying like, you, okay, let me rephrase that question. Because aliens would mean that they come here and they're essentially foreign right, to right, this planet. Right. Okay. Do you believe in life, other life forms, bacteria or not, that live, that live out in our universe? Like in, in, I yeah. feel like with if the universe is as big as people say it is, I feel like there there has to be something. Mm -hmm. Now, so, so, so yes, okay. I do think that there is some other type of life form somewhere other than us. Yeah, the universe is massive. Sorry, and also like apologies for. Um, <laughs> the sound in the background that's just Tyson playing with his ball you know he just wants to that's his contribution to the podcast now his form of playing with his ball is tearing it apart yeah Tyson is a, a habitual like no just he just he basically has destroyed every single toy that he has that's received his goal? huh that's his goal that's his goal with yeah every toy is it's how like, can I destroy destroy immediately <laughs> how fast can I do this it is my challenge. Like he will take it out. Like no matter what it is. Like he's ripped up a tire. Like literally. How do you do that? But and all the ones, all those. Hey, <laughs> for all the people that run like businesses and dog toy businesses, like you can't put indestructible toy, and then my dog destroys it. Like oh yeah, if you want to put indestructible on on your toy label you need to send it to us first <laughs> yes <laughs> and literally. actually let us determine if it is yeah for all especially like all y'all dang all these dang manufacturers of these dog toys and stuff like why are y'all putting false advertising that's not cool <laughs> that's that should be <laughs> you're illegal taking all of my money yes you're like robbing people essentially but back to the alien conversation yeah the universe is really massive like Okay, remember that movie we saw when we were in Florida, everywhere, uh, all the time, all at once, or whatever, or everything, everywhere, all at once? Okay, the one so. That I fell asleep during. Yes, you fell asleep. It's okay. The movie was kind of strange. It was kind of interesting, you know? Sorry, making sure the cameras are still on. Your camera's on too. Um, <laughs> I'll cut that out. Um, what, uh, what was I going to say? Everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's what the movie was called. Basically, did you get the concept of the movie, like the main theme at all? Nope. Okay. So I'm just going to explain it to you. So you know how she was like the main character, the lady. Mm -hmm. She was jumping back and forth between like eras, essentially. Oh, Kinda yeah, yeah. seemed like yeah. eras or what they really were, were like alternate dimensions. Yeah, was, yeah. Okay, so, and basically they're just alternate alternate dimensions on, like, what her life was in other dimensions, essentially. Mm hmm And, all like, all the different outcomes and, mm -hmm. like, if something had gone different, the different mm -hmm. outcome it would have, whether no matter how big or small. Yeah, like, if the husband got a, uh, a divorce earlier, you know what I mean, or, her, or, or if her and her husband never got married, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so take that concept, right? where she's jumping between all these like universes or dimensions or whatever you want to call them. Our universe is supposedly so big that like if you were to continue on far enough into the universe, you would eventually run into yourself doing the same exact thing that you're doing right now and every other alternative to that thing. That's I'm, I'm, I know that's like a weird concept, but if like you really think about it, like like somewhere out in the universe or the multiverse or whatever it is, there is like another me out there mm -hmm. because it's like infinite. So basically think about an infinite amount of times and an infinite amount of possibilities for your life. Like eventually it's going to replicate. 
eventually because it's infinite. It goes on and on and on. Yep. It's just weird. It's weird. So then, yeah. So, I don't know. As far as, like, biological life forms, like, if you just think of the universe as being that big and think thinking that there are however thousands of billions of trillions of stars and then like a million or 500 million um, exoplanets or planets of revolving around those stars it's like I mean there has to be like at least something out there yep can't just say there's nothing like we're the only intelligent beings to have developed right yeah i guess the question is like complexity of that complexity form. but i mean even given all that space out there like maybe like do you out of all that space would there just be one say bacteria <laughs> you know mm. bacteria colony out and you know what i'm saying it's just I think that all the different levels of complexity and life forms that exist on, in our world on, yeah in from world. bacteria to us us yeah. being as what we know of now like the most complex being but or like in like of intelligence as well but and we think we're chosen like we are I and mean, we're special like us as a species but on our planet on our planet yeah and you know i think we're pretty rare you know like i think humans have at least searched you know locally for when i say locally like within our solar system right or within like the nearest galaxy or the nearest whatever solar system that's closest to ours like mm -hmm. they've looked at those planets and they've seen no reason to think that there is any life out there but i mean i don't know and they just have they've just brought out a new telescope called the uh james webb space telescope that just basically doubled the age of our universe like it used to be like 13 billion years old now because of this new technology on this telescope on this new telescope they're calling now like 27 billion years old or oh my. something like that something Gosh. like that yeah but the thing is it's like okay so if we develop newer technology is that going to tell us it's 50 you know it's going to be even older and then basically that like, you're going to get to a point where it's like, well, let's just say it's been here for forever. You know, it's, it just never had a start point. It's just the universe has just been here. There was no Big Bang. It was just here already. Had no start. Like, how is that's not a strange concept to me. Like, for, if it's an infinite size, how can it not be like an infinite start date? You know? Yeah. Like, how are you going to get infinity without... Like if you Wait, started, yeah. How do we even know? How do we even know what they're saying now? I, you, <laughs> that's <laughs> <Wait>. the <laughs> We don't. That's the how thing. Do they can tell us when anything. the start is. Like what? I wonder. I wonder what. Like what gives them the confidence to say that? Well, like, yeah, I wonder. I mean, I'm sure it's some kind of. There has to be something that they're observing, some calculation that they're doing. But it's like what? But it's like because it's like basically how far you can see out into the observable universe because it's crazy it's like they say the observable universe is this big and then they'll say something like the non-observable observable um universe is this big but based on what like saying how it's do like we know if it's quadruple if it's the non observable size. how do we even put a but think but think a about number this. on it though it, exactly it it's, doesn't make any sense in concept because like if they're saying already that it's a non-observable part of the universe because we just can't see it, how are you going to just estimate? Like, how do you even put a number on? I don't know. It, I think it's like if you double this it's because like why of this. Put a number on it, like. <laughs> and then and then you get and then they say this is just based off my YouTube research. <laughs> um, they say they <laughs> scientists. Um, that if you, so basically once you reach the end of the non-observable universe, then there's like, you're basically in a now a local universe cluster with all these other universes. So it's like, bruh, this means this is just never ending. <laughs> like, that means that at this point, 
what are we even like that's why like i do stuff like the podcast because it's like if the universe and all this is like this big like that kind of just automatically takes away all of my like fear and ego about the podcast thing like this doesn't matter at all like it really doesn't like who cares about the investment of time that you put into it or whatever it may be because like if it's a passion or if you if something that you like you might as well just do it you might as well just be who you want to be be yourself in this life because look how big the universe is pretty much who cares you're what it don't matter what we do you're so small we're so tiny like in the grand scheme we of have no effect on the like you're yeah exactly the grand so scheme small. yes like we're we're just small i don't know that's my rant so basically if we have all of this what we know, what we have observed and then all of the what we say the amount of non-observable basically you and then we think about other you like universes there has to be something something out there something i don't know and probably not just one thing probably and who knows when we will okay you remember that that dude (laughs) you remember that dude uh that we were watching the other day down in florida talking about um uh space is space is fake (laughs) 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 so so okay this kind of goes along with this concept but i kind of if this if they say you know all this stuff about like aliens and stuff has been coming out within the last year like oh the government is saying that aliens are real and they're actually holding like congressional you know political hearings about aliens like it's real like it's on the news but it's like uh i don't know like what if they're just saying this as a major distraction because there's nothing else to talk about and they want to just basically use this to like just distract us from something else that's going on in the world I kind of thought about that too. Like we can't just jump to say like aliens are real because the news and poli- and politicians said so. When have they told the truth for all in the past? Like they're not going to just be open and honest about all this. They have a motive behind it. I'm sorry. I think, I think I'm just tired of trying to figure out like their motive and like what's the lie, what's the truth. I'm just like I don't care anymore. No, <laughs> no, they like literally. And then like I saw this video today talking about like, <laughs> so uh, you know how people do the um, not duets, but they kind of like use somebody else's video and make their own video on TikTok. I think isn't it called like duet? Duet. I, it, like it, that, it might yeah. be that. Um, but do it this oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes kind of like that no no no, not do it it wasn't a duet it was um i don't know anyways basically the, it started off with this lady saying so aliens just an- or uh the poli- politicians just announced that aliens are real and it seems like nobody's phased and this dude he pops up he's like you know why nobody's phased <laughs> Cause rent too high. <laughs> it's like this alien the, on the back burner. <laughs> rent too high, groceries. People expensive. are probably hoping that they will just come and change something. Or no, like literally. Because you know things how, are not going in a pretty direction. No, I've literally said I had multiple times where I'm like, you know what? I don't care if it's like a zombie outbreak or a meteor hits Earth. I mean, maybe that will just bring us back down to like, like we were talking about, back to like basic like human survival well not that low okay not that low but like (laughs) more like back to what matters well i'm uh, I'm more saying like if a meteor hits earth everybody's dead (laughs) ain't nobody coming back (laughs) like i'm going i'm talking about like the great rapture like jesus has returned like that kind of like we need to like humans are due and it's i don't know (laughs) There's a lot going on out there. They're doing child sex trafficking, like, and these are like world leaders doing this. Like, that's a real thing. That's why they made that whole movie about it, um, Sound of Freedom. And I don't see that. Like, man, like people like taking, you know, stuff like that. Like people are really like out here against their will. What were we talking about before? Sorry, we had Let's technical- take a break for this nice video of Jackson. <laughs> yeah, just play it's like it right our commercial. here. Right. Yep. Here's pictures of Jackson and uh, maybe pictures of aliens. I don't know. 
<laughs> um, you think we were talking about aliens? Oh, we we're talking about the government and aliens and how it's just been weird. Basically, you're like, that. we need. Let's not say we necessarily need, because like, let's oh, just hope things go in the right way. <laughs> well, on that's, its own. But the yeah, it's humans out just a zombie invasion. No, okay, I take that back. Honestly, <laughs> zombie invasion, that. nah, <laughs> not zombie invasion. That's that I spoke too soon on that one. <laughs> I'll t- I admit that maybe yeah, not no. that. Maybe a meteor. Let's just say meteor, like Greenland. If you've you, if you've never seen Greenland, like go watch that movie. I think Greenland changed my life. That mm-hmm. along with Interstellar. Yeah, Interstellar, changing fantastic movie. Greenland, like, really was a great movie to like put into perspective, um, like what the end of the world would really look like because it was just so realistic in terms of the circumstances. A meteor. Uh, or Haley's Comet or something like that. That's a real comet that goes around every few, you know, decades or whatever. I think it's Haley's Comet. But imagine it's like, oh, Haley's Comet is coming back around. Everybody's excited looking at it. And then a piece of the comet, like it basically changed trajectory and started like it basically they thought it was going to pass by Earth, but it ended up hitting Earth. And it's because they their calculations were off. And imagine being like, oh. calculating. <laughs> yeah. And then they and then the like a piece of the comet like smashed into Orlando and like completely destroyed basically Florida. And it's just like like the explosion could be seen from Atlanta. It's like, whoa. Imagine just millions of people dead instantly and you're just shocked. Like, whoa, like is there gonna be another one? Is there gonna be another one coming? Like, that one sent chills down my spine. I don't know. It just was, like, super intense. And it had Gerard Butler, and it was a great actor. So, <laughs> you know, I love his movies every time. But, um. Can I just say, I just hope we all get our shit together so we don't have to have something that resets. You know, if, 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 you know if, it's, if it's humanity's time, it's humanity's time. And let's just say that. It takes a certain kind of person to even want to be a politician because, and honestly, politicians are kind of at this point puppets to who knows what. They do just nothing that makes sense when it comes to like what they say versus what they do. And I think it's just literally because there's just another entity behind politicians that are really like swinging decisions based off like their immediate need. And we're kind of just like here to do this or do that. That whole that is just exhausting. It is. It's it's exhausting, but that's but that's what they want. They want us to feel like it's exhausting. And when I say they, I know I keep using the word they. It's because who knows? You could just like who would be that surprised? Who knows, who knows if we'll ever know? Like we may, we may know. Especially if people get too fed up. Like if there's another say COVID situation or something that it was, that was very divisive and you know the United States citizens just went into full like rebellion you know and overthrew the government like how they tried doing a few years back in terms of whatever it's like you know I don't know sorry I on another rant <laughs> anyways back on to um, entertainment another conversation I wanted to have with you because I've never had this conversation on a podcast before. Not in this capacity anyways. Um, we're going to talk about Drake. A um, great topic. Yeah. Just Drake because he's one of like the most successful entertainers of, you know, the two thousands, you know, the, or I should say the 21st century so far up to this point, you know, starting in, let's say his career started, mainstream career started in like 2008 2007 2008 or whatever and now it's 2023 so that's a 16 year 15 year 16 year run where he likes dominated you know the music scene and entertainment scene for the most part and it's still dominating yeah he's still like in the headlines like it's not like he's past you know people say he could be past his prime or whatever but that doesn't take away from the fact that he's still like the, one of the most talked about artists and 
entertainers right now, like constantly on social media by, you know, everybody pretty much. And it's like still putting out good music to me, you know. Goofball. Tyson about to break something down. <laughs> um, He's definitely still putting out good music. Yeah, but people say like he doesn't or he he's washed or he doesn't make really oh yeah a lot of people say that about drake hmm. yeah. i have not i have not heard that but that's crazy mm -hmm. they'll say like oh he hasn't put out a good album since uh some people say he hasn't put a, a good album out since take care like oh that what? was his, yeah people say that people are real critical of drake so, I mean, I don't know. Not a whole lot of people. Obviously, like, the majority of people say he's still making good music. Right. You know? But, anyways, I really wanted to see, like, really wanted to see, like, what's your favorite, we'll say, top 15 favorite Drake songs. Oh, we're going top 15? Oh, sorry. Top top ten with five. Because I have, I can definitely do a top fifteen. Dude, I say right. easy. Well, let's just do like. But top ten makes you like really have to choose. Okay, well, let's make it like kind of cool. How about top ten, but with five honorable mentions? So basically, eleven. They're definitively like well, not definitively, but they're on the outside looking in. Like, you know, you had to make a decision between a song and this song. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. And, then, and they could be interchangeable, like in two weeks. It's not like, you can be like, actually, I think I like this one better than that one. Mm -hmm. Or know? like what you're going through in life or like what. Yeah. Like basically <laughs> at this point in life? in life right now, from like all the times you re-listen to his music, like what are your top 10 and then your honorable mention of your five honorable mentions. So We should also do um, maybe like top three or top five of favorite features of drake and other people's songs yeah um we'll do a top Ooh, let's do top <laughs> 10 ah five. features top five features yeah okay top five yeah. features okay and and doesn't have to be like what you think it's like somebody else's opinion maybe it doesn't have to be like what's more popular or mainstream oh no these are all my favorites. some whatever connects to madison like yes. you know i didn't even introduce you but everybody knows who you are at this point do they? Madison Dash, my significant other, girlfriend, best friend for <laughs> the last five years, basically. Five years on Tuesday. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Five years You're on Tuesday. You're not sick of me yet? Nah, definitely not. Definitely not. I don't see. Yeah, you push my buttons, but. I know. It's going to be a little crazy sometimes. You know, all all women are though. So. <laughs> yeah, we are. I mean, we, we definitely can. You've admitted that, so. Um. Let's see. So we're starting with just top ten. Yeah. Just... All right. Ready? Have okay. you made your list already? Is this? Yeah, I think I've got my like. I just may have to make some last minute decisions about which ones I. That's pick. okay. But we're not going in any kind of order, though, right? No. Okay. Uh, top ten in no order. Just top, okay. Just, if you had to say it's in your top 10, it's in your top 10. Okay. You know? Yep. All right, I'm ready. Okay, ready? <clears throat> top 10 with five honorable mentions, favorite Drake songs of his entire career catalog. Go. Am I just reading them all off? Or do you want to go like one, one? Um, no, you're going to you're gonna say your, um, your top. 10 and then you could say your five honorable mentions after that okay okay top 10 and i may interject just to make a comment about it like my thoughts okay so starting with i kind of put them in order of like album that they're from but that's cool we'll, we'll start kind of recent so from her loss we have um jimbotron shit popping okay <laughs> yeah and then Hours in Silence. I love Hours in Hours Silence. Hours in Silence is an amazing song. I love that song. I think it's my favorite one off that one. Yeah, I have to say that Spin About You did not quite make the cut, but it was 
it was close. That's a good, that one has grown on me. Yeah. For sure. Like, when I first heard it, I'm like, it's an okay song. It's not bad. It's just not my favorite. But I listen to it more. I'm like, oh, nah, nah this one yep. is good. And then yeah. from Scorpion, we have Can't Take a Joke. That will be my favorite from that album yeah. to the end of the day. And then from Views, Feel No Ways, um, With You. With You is like, I love both of those songs. I think both of those songs would be probably in my top. 20. Top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. They'll be in my top fifteen. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think with you, it probably has to be like my top three, probably. I love that song so much. And then from "Take Care," uh, look what you, look what you've done. And then mm. of course, I have to put Marvin's room in there. Marvin's room, you can't go wrong with nope. that. That's yeah. And then lastly, we have "Fair Trade," um, "In Too Deep," and "I Miss You Too," or like the "I Am Y Too." From from what album? From um Oh, from uh Certified Love yes, Boy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, those 10. are good. It's All right. Ten. Five honorable mentions now. And these are the ones that we had said didn't quite make the cut, or these are the ones that he featured? Um, no, the ones that just were right there. You you would put them in the top ten, but other ones were just maybe a little bit better in my eyes. Okay, so we have and again, because I have my other favorites in features, but like I said, it's been about you, but we also have his that single solid. It's a good one. Single. Oh, with with Young Thug? I think so, yeah. Yeah, solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then um, from Scorpion Blue Tint. With Future, yep. Mm -hmm. On Scorpion? Scorpion wasn't Future on there? No. <laughs> oh, I'm tripping. Wait, for real? Are you sure? Mm, pretty sure. Um, oh, no, you know, I'll be tripping sometimes. I know Blue Tint didn't. Wait, I thought Blue Tint. No, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of. Uh, oh. What am I thinking of? Oh, he was on there for a minute. What? Um, Future? No. Yeah. No, uh -huh. He had like a couple verses in there. I know it doesn't. Are you sure? Hold on, I'm definitely sure. I'm gonna have to play this out loud for a second. Hopefully, I don't get copyright copywritten. That's future right there. Hold up. Uh, Am I tripping? Ah. Oh, no. this is what I'm. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I'm dumb. Yeah. No, no, no. It does. It definitely does not say featuring it, future. But it, yeah, I and think it's more. I'm so thinking of like. Too. I'm just thinking. Yeah, more of like the. Okay. Yeah, but that's where my mind had went. I'm like, wasn't it feature in there? But okay, yeah, he was in there just a little bit. I yeah. guess so. We are both kind of right. I mean, it, we're both right. It's a good song. Yeah. And then we have. Um, too good with Rihanna. Oh my gosh, that song just instantly puts me in a good mood. Yep, that's one of those songs. And then we'll be fine. Yep, I love that song too. That's, that's a good one. Oh snap! I don't know if I'm even ready. That you had, I liked your, I liked your picks. I mean, you can't go wrong. But I, I, I will say some are purely because like i'll never get sick of the song and then some of them are just because they remind you of something or like a time, a time. that like and that's just like kind of why they hold like a special that's a good way to look place. at music though because like you don't have to think that oh this is the best song because this is the one i'm listening to right now in this instant like or like the one that i could really like because some music is just like i want to keep that for that time period that i listen to it mm -hmm. you know and you listen to it from time to time to remind you of that specific time period. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it, the song still holds like real sentimental value. And it's one of your favorites because like what you just said, it's associated yep. with a certain time or certain person, certain feeling. Um, yeah. I, I have a few of those. Definitely. Yep. I want to hear yours. And then we can come back to features. <sighs> I want to hear yours. Oh, man. 
So I'm really, I'm really curious to see what you came up with for your like, what who made the cut for your top ten. I okay, say can who, you count them? Honestly, what? I've this is uh, this is just off the top of my dome because I haven't made my list. I did not make a list already. Let's hear it. Um, Starting number one. Number one. Again, in no particular order. <laughs> oh my god. Was you? Damn, I just honestly, I'm a massive Drake fan. Not gonna lie, you know. Tyson just burped. Excuse you, Tyson. You done tearing up your ball, man. This man has ripped a hole into the ball. He got the tennis ball out of the middle of the ball. This man ate the ball. And then ate the tennis ball. Oh, man. Okay, I'm stalling right now. I'm stalling. Okay, I'll say one for my top ten. Tick, tock. Ready? Ready. Successful. Ooh. Him and Trey songs. That's like one of my favorite Trey songs. Dang, that is a good one. Um... Oh, snap, man. This is insanely tough right now. Um, I'm going to go Star 67 off if you're reading this is too late. Uh, okay, I'm tripping. Um, Legend as well. Legend, um, if you're reading this is too late. That's one of my favorites. Off that one. That's three? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> I think he's digging something or at least trying to. Yeah. Um Squish, what are you doing? Man, I'm sorry. This is making for terrible a terrible podcast right now because I am Gotta be indecisive. Ready. I'm showing my indecisiveness. I'm showing my indecisiveness. Let's see. I'm a. Uh, when you see it, you should. It shouldn't jump out at you. I know it's all of them, though. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like, but you're right. You're right. If if there is one that is better, I guess you should say like it should stick out for sure. Tyson made the cut. <laughs> what do you do? He's walking behind me. Oh. Hey, stinky. Okay, you know what? This is terrible right now. Oh man. Okay. Um. I got one. I got one. I got one. Sorry. I'll cut most of that out because she. All right. So so far, you said successful. Yep. Legend. Yes. Star sixty seven. Yes. All right. Who's okay. number four? Okay. Um. Or what's which one's number four? Um. Time flies. Okay. That's an insane one right there. That that one is like a tough take. I would call that a hot take because I feel like a lot of people would look at that song and be like top 10 i don't know but i don't know i just really like i love that song i just never it was one of those songs that i could play right now and just not be tired of it yeah you know what i'm saying just i don't know i just really liked it uh i also probably say i want to say so many songs off of um nothing was the same but I'm gonna go See, ahead. See, I think it's funny. Some you all like the songs that you've mentioned so far are from complete opposite albums that I mentioned. Hold on, I only named three, but it you is a trend. Four. I said you're, four. You're at four now. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say own it. Oh, that's a good one. Own it, and um, if I had to say another one off of this album that I could definitively say in my top ten. I'll say, I'll say, come through, <laughs> come through. I love that song so much. Um, let's see. And then I would also. This is gonna be so wild if I say this right now, but I'm gonna have to say, uh, ah, fire and desire. Oh, I love that song. Fire and Desire. And um, probably, probably Controla. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's a funny one. I know. <laughs> that is a funny one. It's a good, it's a good song, though. I'm just thinking of that Snapchat you sent me when you were seeing Controla. <laughs> um, how many is that, five? I lost count. Damn. Let's just say that's... Mm-mm. No, you're at more than five. More than five. I can, I know four for sure. Mm-hmm. Then you 
You probably have like seven now. Seven. You got three more. Uh, three more. It might be um, thirty for thirty freestyle. Okay. And sorry, I definitely came unprepared. And the remorse off of off of uh, certified lover boy. So that's how many? Nine, ten. I think so. Somewhere around there. Dang, we didn't have one overlap. Mm, we didn't? Not no, one? Not one. Okay, how about honorable mentions? So I'm going to say... And only one from Certified Lover Boy? Oh, man. I'm kind of surprised. This entire album is like so good. So good. That's why I'm surprised. Um Okay, another one off of Certified Lover Boy that I will say is Get Along Better with Ty Dollar Sign. I love that song off this one. And then um <laughs> This is gonna be a funny one. Uh, but girls want girls. Yeah. Yep. Girls want girls. That was close to mine too. That probably would have made top twenty. Yeah, that one is mm, a really nice. good song. A really good song. Not gonna lie, I didn't like that song at first. Me neither. Me neither. But and then it was like one it, of those ones that came back like later, and I was like, wait, hold on. Kind of like this song. Yes. Yeah. He, he has a lot of music like that. Mm -hmm. This it's just the Drake topic for me is just man. I didn't think I was going to struggle this hard, though. I'm not going to lie to you. Did not think I was going to struggle this hard to put to, uh, put together a top ten or whatever. I came prepared. All right. I'm just going to say, if I had to listen to, like, a Drake song on repeat for the rest of my life. And it wasn't on your top ten? You're right. But that's oh a, that's gosh. that's. Let's just say you did nine and this is your tenth. Because okay. No, because. <laughs> you can't say that it would be on repeat for the rest of your life and it not be in your top ten. That's how indecisive and how, like. That's how hard of a time I'm having right now. That's how hard of a time I'm having right now. It's like. Yeah, that's a big statement. I know, but best I ever had. Oh, man. Best I'm I surprised you didn't say practice. Really? Yeah, kind of. I like that song. Definitely I like that song, but. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> or, I'm um, sorry. I didn't say more from. From Take Care. I yeah, know. I know. I know. I know. I know. But I also think I will say okay. if we had an overlap, Marvin's room. Yeah, Marvin's room. I will say just to add, they're kind because he. Um, I know we've we've talked about like, like our top three favorite albums, and I will say, there are times where like you have like favorite songs from certain albums, but then there's like certain albums that you just like as a whole. Like like mm -hmm. Scorpion is like my in my top three, and like. No, I only named one from Scorpion in my top 10, but like I could listen to Scorpion from top to bottom and like, and, and not like have to skip it or like want to go on to the next song. I could listen to the whole thing. Yeah. So I like as, as a whole, but I only had like one favorite song from it. You know what I mean? Maybe that should be, maybe that should be the question. I think individual songs are just too hard because. And yeah. I thought, I thought it would have the opposite effect. I thought individual songs would be easier but it's not. Right. It's not any easier. It's and this is kind of like a current, because like also too, the like the old songs that are like are still in your top ten. That's how you really know you like the song. But we have newer songs now, like more recent albums that he's come out with, mm -hmm. that we don't be. They're newer, so they're kind of like more relevant, relevant right new, now. But you don't know where, how they could stand the test of time. Yeah. So this is current top ten. Okay, let's say a top three albums then. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This is gonna be hard because I really have to f figure out who comes in the third spot because I always I have two. Okay. But, but did you finish your? I'm, honorable I'm mentions? pretty sure you I work did. on that. We'll come back to you. Yeah, later. we'll come back to that because sheesh. <laughs> Jeez um, Louise. But top three albums. Okay, I have to say because of the time that it reminds me of. Scorpion. And, yeah. Yeah. Best summer yeah. of my life. Scorpion. Mm. Special place for we sure. We had a whole party when that album came out, and that's also the summer that you and I got together. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Without Scorpion, I don't know if I if I like really would have had an excuse to ever hang out. Who like, knows? It was like, oh yeah, let's go listen to this Drake. Is, that's what happened in our dimension. 
Yeah, maybe in the other dimension, it was Rick Ross had an album, and we were like, oh, man, look, come, come over here and listen to this new Rick Ross. <laughs> I don't know. That's so random. That is random. Um, okay, but real talk. So, Scorpion. Mm-hmm. Take care. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to the last one, it's really hard. It's a really tough decision, but I'll tell you Scorpion, what it comes down care. between. It's between her loss and views. Her loss and views. Views and her loss. But again, hmm. I think I technically like more from views. Than her loss. Ooh, views, 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 views. Hmm. That's it. Views is one of those albums that's so interesting because it's I like love views. it's like you have so many songs that you go to and that you listen to and that always put you in a certain like good mood or and it, it also it has like a wide range of songs like you have songs like controller and then you got fire and desire yep it's like you got the whole spectrum so you get every i feel part. Like that's kind of why it's special yeah yeah it's like you really got variety in there a lot of variety a lot of like hits like what's a good song off of views that is was like a a hit um child's play remember when um what was it one dance one dance Where they were playing everywhere there was like wasn't there like some shark video i don't know something i don't know but yeah one it, dance it went viral for sure yes it went viral yep rightfully so i'm gonna look it up hotline bling like Oh, yeah. In that music video? Yeah, the music video when he's like in those squares and it's like pink and <laughs> Different colors, yeah. Colors, yeah. Doing that little. Yep. <laughs> um, Faithful. Oh, Faithful yeah. with uh, Division and Pimp C. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, that's a crazy song. Um, Of course, I didn't even say You With Me or Feel No Ways. I didn't even see those. I didn't even say those two on my top ten. See, feel no ways. We would have had one in common. Or yeah. what was it the one? You with me? Oh no yeah, ways. that's a good one. Both of those songs, like, are I would say deserve a spot in my top ten. But I didn't even say it. That's how tough it is because I really do enjoy his music. They just, I don't know what it what it is. I don't. But it's good. It's good. Remind me to find that shark video. I'm gonna feel real crazy if I just like made that up. I uh, I think you made that up. No way. I don't remember no video. Are you sure? I don't. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. Only thing I remember about sharks is like baby shark. Baby, baby shark. shark. Do 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 do. Yeah, no. Baby. Um. What else? What's your top three? Top three what? Albums. Oh, albums. <laughs> <laughs> um oh snap okay this one's gonna be slightly easier for me so we're gonna go ahead and just throw on there off the top nothing was the same nothing was the same um after that and no this is technically considered like a mixtape or whatever but um if you're reading this is too late you know that's an album mixtape i don't really know but if you're reading this, it's too late. It's, I just love that song. I mean, sorry, that album top to bottom. For sure. I could listen to every song. I mean, every album I could really do that. But that one. And last but not least, third spot in no particular order. Um, Yeah. We're going to throw just take care on there. Is it? Yeah. Let's just don't take care on there. Let's just Never do it. Wrong, Let's just do it. That. You can't really argue against it. You can't. How can you argue against that? Nope. I just have to point out that I think I really just made that up with the whole shark video thing. You probably did. And I have so many questions as to where that came from. <sighs> Had to be Baby Shark. 
I just swear there was like some video because wasn't there like a one dance like challenge like dance challenge people were like submitting videos or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i swear there was just one that got like a lot of attention for no reason and was something with a shark probably but honestly i wouldn't whatever. doubt it there probably was a video like that out there with a the shark in that song i guess we'll never know i'm not i mean we could look it up we'll look it up later um yeah but just to put like a bow on that Drake conversation. What do you like about Drake? Um, like his music, I guess. Like, how, first off, I like the variety he has, like we talked about. I think he just is talented in the way that he can make a lot of different music, and it's all ends up being catchy in its own way. Mm. And then. We've talked about it before, but, like, I think just, like, the beats of his music, like, they're just, the they're vibey. Yes, that's, a, that's probably the word I would use, as cliche as it is. Yep. Sure. Just, like, best way to put it. that's just the best way to put it. It's, like, it just brings about a certain, like, element of feeling, you know? Like, what is a vibe? It's, like, a feeling, like, a feel, like. It puts just a certain feel out there. Yep. It puts you in a certain space. Like some music puts you in like on the beach. Some music puts you like on a late night car drive to. When you're in your feels. Yeah. Or yeah. Some music puts you immediately in your feelings or. Yeah. Yeah. Some music is just like hype music, you know, like you listen to it and you want to like get excited. Yeah. Some. Yeah, I understand that. I would say for sure that that right there. What and you just, he just, you know, he has those lyrics that you're just like, what? Yeah, yeah. It's like, ooh. Or I was it's like, kinda, that sounded good. Yeah, that sounded real, like, I don't know. He kind of has like a, he kind of has like a slight, like Lil Wayne element to him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why people were saying at the very beginning when he was like first jumping off his career that he kind of sounded like Lil Wayne in terms of like, certain deliveries and certain lyrics and stuff, certain um, metaphors, you know, whatever you call it. But, yeah, they're both excellent. They both have a a space, you know. He's definitely one of my favorite music artists. Mm-hmm. I'll say that and not feel any shame for it. I know some people say it's corny or... He makes light skin music or women, or music for girls or whatever. It's just like that man made good music, man. People will say everything about Drake. Well, you know, hey, we're just hating. I guess, I guess, <laughs> but yeah, I don't typically like fan, you know, go all in on like a like a deep dive into an artist, but I'll happily like share favorite songs and stuff about drake 100 percent. we uh we got we have to go to a drink concert in our a lifetime. drake concert yeah it's crazy because he's already 36 about to be 37 That's you know crazy. he's getting up there now, he's not getting up there for like as a human being but as far as like a, a artist in right. terms of like a rap career like being out and about you know that's crazy you can, i mean i guess you can Depending on how, like, what kind of music you make, I guess you can still be relevant. I, I was just going to say that. I was like, honestly, I wouldn't put it past Drake to be one that stays relevant for honestly, a Honestly, that that's time. not a bad take. Like, I would agree with that. Yeah. Honestly, like... I mean, I he's capable. He's capable of definitely, like, making older Drake, like, music just has, like, a different vibe to it. Maybe, like, something that's just, like, an evolved version. Like, yeah. It's just music because he's, like, a... He's just making music. Maybe he just has that musical like thing where I just like making music. Mm-hmm. Keeps him like certain has a certain feeling. Like imagine he's fifty five year old Drake dropping like tunes still. Drake. Like dropping the hits. Like what? Please keep making music. Honestly, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I will not I don't know. There there are some artists though that can't make that music. Like how they make it until they're fifty five. Like you can't make hood music trap like 
I don't know. Like, you can't make that genre of music when you're, like, 70. It's not the same. It's just, why are you hard at 74? Like, <laughs> relax. <laughs> you old. I don't know. It's just, but, yeah, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. But, anyways, I don't know. So, a movie that we saw recently, um, Oppenheimer. That was an interesting movie, Christopher. Uh, in, uh, interesting Christopher Nolan movie. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, like we had our gripes about it, but some people are calling it Christopher Nolan's best movie. That's such a stretch, though. I think it's a stretch. Like, don't get me wrong. Let me just say it. It was a good movie. Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. Like, first off, I stayed awake. Mm-hmm. And it was a long movie, so that's and saying something. Yeah, that is saying something. Saying let something. me tell you. Yeah. But I just think that, like, I think when it finished, I wasn't like, you know, eyes open, smiling, and I looked at you and was like, "Whoa, that was good." I kind of sat there and I was like, "Okay," because mm-hmm. I, I just immediately like had questions. Like, I just yeah, was exactly. Like, Me too. Just immediately, I wasn't. Is that a good of- movie though? Is that like the sign of a good movie? But I will say, though, I, I, it's hard to say because sometimes, like, there are movies that they have, like, more intricate details that you get when you, like, watch it again. But mm-hmm. isn't that, like, in a way, wouldn't that kind of almost kind of make a movie special? Because it it's like, okay, when we see movies, we watch them one time, and sometimes you'll never watch it again. If it, like, wasn't that good, that's, like, the one and only time. But if you have a movie that's not only good that you would watch it again, but then it's good because you keep getting little like new details. You're like, wait, I didn't notice that before. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, wait, mm-hmm. that actually kind of makes the movie superior mm-hmm. because that is a way of keep bringing you back mm-hmm. even after you've watched it that first time. Like imagine watching Oppenheimer again with certain things, like knowing certain things going into yeah. it. Yeah. Or looking out for certain things, like it'll probably bring a greater appreciation to it. That's why I said, like, one of my first takes was like, I need to just watch it again. Yep, just like just movies. have some questions and just some like, I don't know if I would necessarily call them as much as plot holes, but definitely things where I was like, wait, what? If, like, hold on, this didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Did I like miss something or? Kind of like us. Yeah. Jordan Peele's Us. But see, we recently watched Us again, too. And when I tell you, like, that was, like, 50 times better than the first time I watched it. Because surprisingly, that I actually had not watched that since I saw it in theaters first. Me neither. And seeing, like, again, like, that movie, there were things that I was like, wait, did I notice that the first time? Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. This makes it, like, even better. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess, like, I don't know. That kind Same of- thing with Get Out. Yep. It's like you watch it again. You're like, oh, that makes me even see. Appreciate, I think I was even better, more, more shook watching Get Out again than Us. Both, both. I definitely had details. I was like, oh, I don't think I like really let that sink in the last time. Yeah, I know. Just get your laughs out. <laughs> get out. Okay, we I'm all just, get it. No, okay. I will just say this. I will say this. I don't know. I just Us is one of those movies. I mean, sorry, Us. Get Us. Damn. Get Out <laughs> is one of those movies that, you know, as a interracial mixed person mixed with African-American and Mexican, like, having a white girlfriend, I don't know, Get Out is one of those movies that's like, oh, I never thought I would ever become in a relationship with or be in a relationship with a, a white girl. What would you do? So I normally dress like this, right? Yep. What would you do if you just woke up one day and I had like a turtleneck on and my hair like slicked <sighs> in that ponytail that she had at the end when she just like basically, you know, he figured out what was going on with the family. Yeah. And it's like they all like flipped a switch. And she like, there's like that shot of her in the room where she's like. Yeah, robotic. And has like the turtleneck and her hair is like slicked back. She looks completely different. What would you do? I would have questions. I would have questions. Um, yeah, questions would need to be answered for sure. I, I would just have, you know, I would have to think about it a little bit. <laughs> I couldn't just let it slide. Like, no, it was like just too much. There's a drastic change about 
Um, but that movie was was definitely good for that reason. That it just puts you like it puts you in a realm where you're like, you know, African American men are just looked at, you know, differently in that sense. You know, it just kind of you just never know. <laughs> you never know. I guess you don't. I mean. I'm sure it's happened before. I'm sure there's been an instance where a white lady in America dated a black dude and it just ended up being bad because of some weird like that. Maybe not that exactly, but it's a good movie. Maybe not brain transplants. Maybe not brain transplants. It's a good movie, though, 100%. For sure. And then one that, like, a lot of people did not like as far as Jordan Peele movies... um, or the one I would say received the most criticism was Nope. Mm-hmm. And I like Nope. I I, I was, liked it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Obviously, like, not... I wouldn't put it above Get Out no, or Us. No, honestly, or not even equal, but... Yeah. It, it was fine. Like, I didn't hate watching it, but... I feel like we need to watch that one again. I think so, too. I would agree. Because, like re-watching it and even like watching some of those like explained videos on those movies like that one has a lot of that yeah a lot of that to make you appreciate the movie a little more um but the thing that was like the alien thing or whatever that was like you couldn't see it you just saw you know it abduct something or you would see it move around in the clouds and at the end it's like some kind of angel looking thing yeah you know or some kind of like weird something like you can't even really describe it Mm -mm. it's just big like a big white cloth floaty thing (laughs) that's pretty much what it looks like (laughs) um yeah we we just we need to watch again yeah but it you know and it said like and they said something about like it like like its habitat was like the upper atmosphere yeah and that's where it just lived and that's the reason why we never saw it because it was just at the edge of the atmosphere essentially just living up there and it came down to you know eat i don't know why but you know what scene i like love in that movie Hmm. is when they basically get the cameras right Mm because they're trying to like record and through like the recording you just they like notice that like one cloud that just like doesn't move. Yeah, I don't know why, but like that scene, I was like, Whoa. that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. I would agree. That was definitely a cool like moment in the movie. It was kind of like it was cool, but it was kind of like eerie at the it same was time. Yeah, it, just, it was a good moment. It was eerie. Yeah, and then the little like um, the technology sales dude that like came in for part of the movie oh yeah that he was a good addition like he was one of the people that made the movie better i feel like and just how he was like invested when he like put in the equipment he was Mm -hmm. like still watching to see like what they were talking about yeah he was like i want in like what is going on i know there's something up oh in fact wasn't he the one that noticed the cloud that didn't move i think so he He was like the one analyzing the footage Mm -hmm. yeah yep he was he was yep something like that but yeah that's a good movie and he has another one coming out this year. Really? December. When? Yep. Oh. Yup. He's just an interesting mind, I would say. And then you think about like Jordan Peele and you think of Key and Peele. It's like completely different. I want to watch more of their skits. Oh my gosh. Like they're, they're funny. Like they're like kind of like goofy and almost like that. They do really good about like making things that are like ridiculous, but they don't go they don't cross the line of like all right now yeah this is stupid yeah like they just make it that right kind of like goofy funny yeah sometimes they kind of step on the line a little bit yeah it's like yo what (laughs) What? (laughs) like the one where he was like playing the like rock music and his like eyes were bleeding and stuff (laughs) and he was bleeding out of his ears like bro (laughs) like what is happening (laughs) right now he's like pulling he's pulling his teeth out and stuff it's like yo what is going on oh my gosh it's like what is like is this torch self-torture or is this comedy like wasn't there one where uh jordan Pugh was like a kid or like a baby (laughs) Um, and it was like really creepy because it was like his head with like a baby body or something (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was weird. It's like, 
it just did not look right. But it was like <laughs> the ones that I was rolling. Okay, I will say one of my favorite ones was uh, Slava. <laughs> <laughs> he's like slap ass he's like no i don't want to slap ass anymore <laughs> oh my god he's like, at the very end he was like he really had like an actual mental disorder he's like, slap ass. Slap ass. <laughs> oh my goodness we definitely have to make another one on those oh my god those are so freaking funny um and then what's another one that was I'm trying to think. I was actually funny. about to look. Um, yeah, the classic substitute teacher one. But I mean, everyone knows that one. Whoa, whoa, wait, whoa. A A wrong. Whoa, A O. Oh, yes. Black A. Yes, of course, of <laughs> course. That's like definitely in like the most memorable um, key and peel moments. Yep. Freaking um, substitute teacher. What was his name? <laughs> oh, Shaq Hennessy's oh. office. Yeah, you know another one too, is uh when they're like in the skit they're like a couple or not not um they're not a couple but they like are doing a dinner date as like um with their significant other and they're like trying to rant to each other about like their wife and, oh. they're, like, and they're like bitch yeah. you know what I told you? you know what I told what'd you say I say bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one was insane. Oh like, bro, come on. <laughs> and then, like, at each place that they go, it just gets more just, like... More absurd. Cur- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in outer space now. <laughs> they can't hear us up here. <laughs> and then, but they still go, and I said... <laughs> yeah, they'll look everywhere. <laughs> Make sure she's not around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, who thinks of this? Like, what's going oh. on? But it's good, though, like... They're creative. Yeah, they are creative. I admire that. I don't. I just don't have that gene. I can. I can. I don't even know if you, if I could come up with something good, let alone like. Yeah, no, I cannot. Even if I tried. I could. I think you, you could. could. I no, think, you could. I think anybody could. Maybe not every anybody. Yeah, I was gonna say. It depends on how open minded you are. Like, that's the issue. It's like whenever you like people are like, oh, you know, you have a blank canvas. Like you could do anything with it. Like there's endless possibilities. Mm-hmm. No, I hate that. Yeah, you told me that. Like writing a paper. Yeah, I hate writing papers for yeah. that exact reason. Yeah, yeah. But oh. you could, because you find joy in that. You're like, oh yeah, cool. Like I want to do that. That just stresses me out. Yeah, I, I see. I see how it could. Like that's the that's like a writer's or like a yeah writer's block essentially or like a creator's block you know it's like you reach that quicker i guess because it's like uh you just can't think of anything basically nope my mind goes blank yeah i think creativity just comes from being inspired by something like uh, with a lot of things that i do i like i'm inspired by something that causes me to like want to now do it or just do my own version of that thing that i really really enjoyed like i enjoyed it so deeply that i want to replicate it in a sense like or it inspired me or it moved me that much to where i just want to do it right you know but like music videos for instance like i love music and i've always thought of like man i would kill to make like visuals or something to it like some song that i just really appreciate it so much i will say you have definitely put me on like enjoying and appreciating music videos for sure that was not always something like that i like doing and sometimes if i liked a song first Mm -hmm. and then i watched the music video it almost like ruined the song for me Mm -hmm. if like the visual or or, like you know whatever they did in the music video was like not something that i liked Mm -hmm. it almost put like a bad yeah like, yeah t- like taste on the song after that mm-hmm. but i it like doesn't necessarily do that anymore because like i think i've kind of learned to like appreciate and like it is kind of interesting to see like what they come up with nowadays and it could be literally the one of post malone how he's just like tweaking in the yard in front of a pool oh my <laughs> just God. like who know like doing absolutely nothing but no. i was entertain the entire time yes it was for whatever (laughs) reason it was just a still like dope music video it was like why is this music goofy as hell but it was hilarious yeah what song was that um insane no was it insane 
I think it was insane. I think it, you know, it was insane. Yeah. Yeah, it was insane off of the 12 carat or whatever album. But I think. Yeah. Um, yes. What was the one with, like, he, was, he had an ice cube in his video? I don't know, because the ice cube had absolutely no relevance to the song. So no. it wasn't like I could even tie it to anything. No. There was literally, there's literally a Post Malone. Which one was that? Song where the music video is him trying to move a giant ice cube like and not like a not like a glacier ice cube like a an oh act, that like was a, morning morning <laughs> really off the new album off the yeah, new one of austin what <laughs> yes okay so yeah he had okay like the ice cube that you pull out of your fridge like imagine you just get a square of ice <laughs> out of your fridge and put it like in a middle of like a field in Switzerland. But you multiply that size of the ice cube by like a million. Yeah, it's like a giant ice cube. Like it's I don't know, like twice the height. You know. And he basically takes fire and melts it. Yeah, he melts. Yeah, he melts the <laughs> ice cube and puts it in his drink at the very end. I did that. like the ending. The ending was cool. That yeah, was the funny. ending was cool. Yeah. It was just interesting. And then, like, the setting, like, it was like you're in some village. In, like, yeah, I did not get that The at countryside all. of Switzerland. Like, interesting. But it makes me, do you ever wonder, like, when, when they seem to have some crazy idea with music videos? And to us, like, I guess when you look at it, you're like, how does this tie into the song at all? Do you ever wonder if, like, there is, like, an underlying tie or, like, reason why they did that? visual or do you think that it just is mm. just to be out there and different and i feel like the visuals oof, it just depends like i don't know some people are more like that where you you put you know kind of like subliminal subliminal <laughs> subliminal messages <laughs> into music videos or whatever and then there's some people that just show you what they want you to see up front that have like like they have more of a reliance on like flashy stuff and like juice rolls. cgi you know computer generated whatever like you know yeah it just depends on the on the music video director and the artist I guess. I don't know. Makes you wonder. Yeah. And you're like, this is what y'all went with. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like it It adds a, another, another element to the music. You know, yeah. it kind of adds, like, the artist's take on it, in a sense. Like, in terms of what you see. Yeah. Because music kind of... Just puts you visually somewhere already. Yep. You know. Like when you think of Frank Ocean, it's like a certain f f like view on life that you have at that moment. Yep. You know. Typically it's good. Typically it's like a reflective time period in right. your life. You know. That's when Frank Ocean becomes really like really good. He's always good, but he really like Oh yeah. Hits home whenever you're like kind of reflecting on life or like Sitting back like, man, I really appreciate life right now. Right. You know, but. Always be at, like, the top for me. Yeah. Yeah, same. He's just uh, different. Yep. It's like he has his own sound, and you don't have to worry about him sounding like somebody else. Mm -hmm. Donovan, <laughs> what would you do if you were invisible for a day? Wow, that's an amazing question. What would I do if I was invisible for a day? Well, I would do something that makes me money. Um, I don't know if I'm robbing something. I don't know if I can no, do that. No, I'm going to lie to you. That's absolutely the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. I mean, you got to think, think robbery think. has to be an option. Like, that sounds so bad. See? I don't I don't advocate for robbery. Don't y'all don't be out here robbing people. Like people work hard for things. You know, I'm not a robber. I would never take anything. Just want to put that out front like for both of us, you know what I'm saying? But 
that shouldn't even have to be said. I just it's like a disclaimer. Some people on the internet are <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Anyways, the fact that we have never mind. Yeah, we're not gonna get in. We're not gonna get into the internet. Um, you just the reason why you would think about robbery is because you gotta think about like maybe a bank. Like you're invisible. Like there's literally. Honestly, I don't know. I'm really at that point in life where I'm either robbing a bank or I'm robbing Petland. <laughs> That's a hard question, though. <laughs> That's a hard one. Like, what else are you going to do invisible? What else? Please tell me some other thing that you're going to do invisible besides try to get money somehow, some way. Like, you got to take advantage. Like, you were blessed with an amazing ability. You're invisible. Yep. Like, come on, you could easily make so much money if you see a floating puppy just leaving the store <laughs> just don't ask any questions oh my gosh um okay my turn to ask you one although Ooh. really quick question What's that? if you're invisible for a day does what you're carrying become invisible too Cause like probably how can, not so how can you like then that be it becomes pointless. Then kind of. how am I supposed to rob anything if what I'm robbing? Is <laughs> like you you, you, still see you it. gotta wait till nighttime, where you're not being seen. Oh, so it's like they could probably like see the money being carried out, on the just cameras. floating. Yeah, but they can't. Put, but they, they can. can't pin it on you. Yep, it's a good point. Would you turn invisible? But forever, would you ever do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a stupid question. Why would you want to be invisible? <laughs> I mean, I guess you question. could just go about life and do literally whatever you wanted, but... Oh, Lord. I'm not trying to be invisible for my family. Oh. Um, I'm not trying to be invisible for my squishy. Yeah, see, that's... And, of course, invisible from you. Okay. I got one. This is a good question for you. What's the most interesting thing about your family history? Oh, gosh. Family history? Mm -hmm. Just, like, about any of my... Yeah. That should, you could be anything, like, from your parents to heritage to a time in your family's history. You think that's a good question for me? <laughs> <laughs> you got so close to the camera. I mean, to the mic. Oh, my gosh. We both know there's nothing that interesting. Your parents were bodybuilders. Oh, wait. That's actually a good one. Dang it. I should have thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mom and dad were both competitive bodybuilders and, like, super shredded. No, like, I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzen Schwarzenegger <laughs> uh, bodybuilder type. Like, yeah. Like, winning st all state. Comp, like Mr. Olympian, like levels of swollenness. Like, I think insane. my mom got like fourth in the state or something. Yeah. Like, could it? Yeah, it was up there. Maddie's dad was squatting like 800 Pretty, pounds. Yeah, 800, 850 pounds. 850 pounds. Which is most. 850 pounds squatting? What? <laughs> what? Like, how? How? Crazy. That's insane. Yeah. What they did, though, I'm, like, really proud of them, though. It took – oh, I just can't imagine, like, the amount of discipline that takes. Honestly, props to all people who do that. Like, that takes – Competitive bodybuilding. So much discipline. Mm -hmm. It's not all, like, you know, just, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to eat broccoli and chicken. No, it's very, like, strategic and, yeah. like, planning. Based. Yeah, Plant, like how to peak before mm -hmm. you know your like competition and how you know just to get the right amount of like gear you're eating so you're like at your leanest at the competition but you don't get to the point where you're like starting to lose the muscle mass that you built mm -hmm. like it's mm -hmm. it's like that's it's what tough. honestly like it's so interesting when you think of like fitness influencers and then you got you got people with like just as far as fitness as a whole you have like people like fitness influencers and you have bodybuilders and then you have like strong people that like try to lift the most weight you know it's kind of oh, like, like powerlifting powerlifting yes mm -hmm. that's what that's what i'm saying it's just like then you have athletes and like it's just you have a bunch of different 
Different ways to push your body. Yeah. It's kind of cool in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Like, and also, like, measure it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't know. Like, if you're basically like a fitness influencer on social media, it's like people measure you in a sense. Like, you let your followers and your whatever, like, kind of measure you in a sense. And then, like, with bodybuilding, you let a contest measure you, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's tough though. It ain't easy. Nope. Very admirable. You got to be consistent the entire time. Like, it's. That's one thing. Like, your parents are really like. I see all the trophies. I'm just like, your parents are really like top tier. They weren't just. They no, did that. Yeah, they weren't they just really no like, that. we're going to the gym and we're going to work out. You know, no, they were like on another level. And there was that. no. Like, feel like going to yeah there. like i'm tired i'm going rain or shine like yep. or yeah rain or shine yep just crazy shout out to mr j and miss mary love you mom and dad love y'all so much y'all are great parents are great we love our parents love them so much can't wait till we're living closer to them yeah me too me too that's one thing that's been hard about like growing up and I'm sure everybody has to go through it, but just living further away from your parents, especially if you loved and appreciated them. Like when you let life obligations or whatever, and you know, like kind of add that extra bit of like a barrier to like having just a, like the ability to hang out with them as like a, on a consistent basis. Cause it's just, when you're living with them growing up, it's like you live in their house, you know, so you see them every day and you talk to them every day. You eat with them every day. You mm -hmm. live in the house. I mean, that's typical, you know, a blessed household. And, you know, people that grew up with like single mothers or fathers like or with no parents like I know that's a tough thing maybe, but salute like that takes like super strong people. And, you know, it's like an amazing thing for people to pull through things like that because their parents are not like one of those things that are like a surefire thing. You know, they're like definitely a blessing. <laughs> they're a blessing that they are. I know. But I don't know. I love parents. I love them too. I love them so much. They like, I don't know. I don't know. They take care of you. Mm-hmm. You know. What? Nothing. <laughs> They're just cool. Just like dogs. There's family. I know. You know? <laughs> My parents are just like dogs. <laughs> They're not like dogs, but you know what I mean? They're just like something that you just cherish. I you know. know. They're just something that you cherish and just love in this crazy cold world. You need that. You need mama's home cooking. You need dad to talk to about like life things, you know, connect, give the best advice. Love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Wait, before we wrap, real quick. One last thing. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Disney World. It's crazy. We were literally just in Florida. South Florida. Yeah. But we weren't by Disney World, though. No. I think I think I, we had looked at it, what was it, like four, three, three, four hours away? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. We need to go. Yeah. I really want to go to, like, the Star Wars part. I know you do. I want to go to that so bad, and uh, oh, I know we like. I know it's technically for like you know younger kids. Yeah. But I feel like I will appreciate it <laughs> that much more being older. Oh yeah, no, I would. Like, I don't oh, care how old cool. I am. Yeah, it's just like one of those things that I'm like a very nostalgic kind of person, and oh, yeah. seeing your favorite thing, you know, growing up as a kid, like. 
of course, it's, you're going to ex- like experience it differently as a kid. Like you probably love it a hundred times more as a kid than you would as an adult. But there's something that you can still like have a good time with, you know, and cool experience. Like you see, you hear all your favorite music from your f- favorite childhood movies or current movies like Star Wars. I still really like Star Wars like to this day, like, you know. You hear like the, all the Star Wars music. You see all the, you know, Clone Troopers, Storm Troopers, Darth Vader, like iconic Star Wars scenes. It's like almost being in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's cool. Just like wow, it's just like they did a good job with this. Like they did a good job with the Harry Potter park in Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, those kind of things are like really cool when they do it like that. Like, the pull it off is not cheesy or corny. You know what I mean? Like, it actually makes you feel like... It is actually really cool. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I want to go to Disney World. So... Me too. That's what's on our bucket list, definitely, for the near future. Oh, yeah. Has to be. Yeah. Especially whenever you get out of school and stuff. Yep. Oh, many vacations to come. Many vacations. Um, Yeah. I guess that's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. How you feel? Good. My ears hurt. My ears kind of hurt too. That was a long time. That's a. How'd I do? High five. I'm hungry. I got the munchies. Thanks for watching the show. Leave a like on this video and share to your friends if you enjoyed to help boost the show's performance. For more content from D, subscribe to the D Mosley official YouTube channel to see hundreds of other videos and also follow us on Spotify and wherever else you consume your social media content. It's free for you and helps us immensely. Be blessed and see you soon. Peace.